Join us as we journey to a UNESCO World Heritage listed landscape deep within the Fiordland National Park on the road to Milford Sound, a natural wonder of the world. On the road, we get up close to local wildlife and learn about what makes New Zealand fauna so unique. Set within dramatic uplifted mountains, travelling through glacial carved valleys and fjords. Filmed in all four seasons over a two and a half year period to capture the best of what this national park has to offer. We document the complete journey along the Milford Road from Tiano to the wonder itself, Pio Pio Tahi or Milford Sound. We take a voyage with Cruz Milford through this jaw-dropping fjord and glimpse the local marine life sheltered among the towering cliffs that cascade thunderous waterfalls. Join us for what we consider a must on every person's bucket list. So here we are at a scientific wilderness area just outside of Tiano. And this area is very, very important for the preservation of these types of little shrubs we have around here, known as Halicarpus bidwilli, also known as bog pine. A lot of this area was destroyed, unfortunately, when Europeans first arrived, moving into the area and using it for pastoral releases. The initial landscape around Tiano was kind of similar to this, uh, swampy ever since the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago. The types of pines here, the Helicarpus bidwilli or bob pine, they are very, very rare and they're endemic to this region, which is why this is set up as a preservation or a reserve area. In the background there, we have these mountains known as the Takatimus, and the Takatimus were very important to the Māori people. Takatimu was actually one of the seven canoes that in legend had come down here from the mythical land of Hawaii. And in their legend, we had seven waka or seven canoe that made their way to Aotearoa, or New Zealand, and only one of those waka made their way down here to the South Island. Now in the legend, the Takatimu canoe, it actually was blown inland by a giant wave, made its way here, turned to stone. So that's basically what these mountains are supposed to represent. Now for the Māori, one of the very important things to them was their maunga, which is their mountains, and also their waka, and this is where their whakapapa or their lineage comes from. So they could actually talk about this mountain here being not only their waka, their canoe, but also their monga, their very special mountain for this region. Our journey starts from Tiano, known in Māori as the place of swirling waters. It is home to the Tiano bird sanctuary that cares for endangered and vulnerable native bird species, such as the flightless takahe that was thought to be extinct for 50 years until 1948 when a small population was found in the adjacent Murchison Mountains. Their vulnerability lies in the loss of habitat and the threat of invasive mammalian predators that have been introduced to New Zealand. Luckily, due to conservation efforts, their numbers are on the rise. From Tiano Downs, along New Zealand's second largest lake, Lake Tiano, we pass several sheep and cattle stations, which frequently creates what is known as a Southland traffic jam. Finally, we reach Fjordland, a national park that is part of a 2.6 billion hectare UNESCO World Heritage listed region of wilderness and natural beauty. This accounts for 10% of the country's landmass. Here we are greeted by large open valleys that were once carved by massive glacial flows during the last ice age. Now all that remains of these glacial masses are scarred mountainsides, trickling streams and alpine lakes. So I'm here inside of Fjordland National Park, by far the largest national park in New Zealand. 
12,607 square kilometres or 5% of New Zealand's landmass. The type of forest that dominates this landscape here is known as beech forest. This type of forest goes back to the days of Gondwana land, so about 100 million years ago when the southern continents of the world were interconnected. The Mirror Lakes are a must-do on the road to Milford Sound. A series of lakes, when given the perfect conditions, create phenomenal reflections. Also a great place for spotting wildlife, frequented by paradise shell ducks and sculps, long-finned eels and trout, or the darting of tomtits, fantails and the South Island robin, who can be heard with a call iconic to our beach forests. Another local frequently spotted in the forests of Fjordland is the flightless weka, an endemic species of the rail family which, like many of our native birds, has a flair for curiosity. In the trees often spotted are members of the parrot family, the alpine kia and its arboreal cousin the kaka, which is usually found below the tree line. The native wood pigeon known as the ketadu is also abundant in these forests and can often be seen intoxicated on fermented native berries. At Lake Gunn, named after the farmer and bushman Davy Gunn, you can throw in a line for a chance to catch a brown or rainbow trout in season. These fish are introduced to New Zealand but have minimal impact on the ecosystem and make for great sport. We have this dense temperate rainforest in this region because it's one of the wettest areas on earth. On average we have 8 to 10 meters of rain per year and over 200 days of the year it actually rains down here. That's because if you were to head west of here along the 45th parallel, the next landmass you would arrive at would be Argentina on the east coast of South America. Two thirds of the world's ocean for weather systems to build up and not precipitate until they hit our mountains down here in a region known as the Southern Alps. The Southern Alps were formed by two tectonic plates coming together. We have the Pacific tectonic plate and the Indo-Australian tectonic plate. And as they collide together, they form uplift, some of the fastest growing mountains in the world. And they grow roughly the same rate that your fingernails grow. Scientists estimate in the last 2 million years, we've had 28 kilometers worth of growth with the mountain ranges in this area here. But they've also eroded about 25 kilometers.
glimpsing the Hollyford Valley, we stop along the way at Pops View Lookout, a memorial to Robert Alistair Andrew, who died during an avalanche nearby in 1963. This is an excellent place to spot the famous Kia. The Kia, like many of our native birds, is endemic to New Zealand, meaning it can only be found here on Earth. They are the world's only species of alpine or mountain parrots, which means they are generally found around the tops of mountain ranges. We enter into valleys that are sculpted from a tectonic divide and follow the Holyford River to Monkey Creek. Named after the dog of explorer William H. Homer, who drafted up the original plans for a land-based route to Milford Sound in 1889. The most likely place to find New Zealand's very own equivalent of a cheeky monkey, the mischievous Kia. The Kia is a social species and are usually found in small groups. They also have a tendency to be curious around humans. This in part can be attributed to their intelligence, which is said to allow them a problem-solving capacity similar to that of a five-year-old. Due to this, they have been known to spend a lot of time around people, and in turn have unfortunately been fed by those who are uninformed during these interactions. Because of this, in some circumstances, Kias have been known to even drag traffic cones into the middle of a busy highway in hopes of a free meal. From Monkey Creek, we continue through the Holyford Valley, whose glacial past is recognisable by a defined U-shape, where glaciers once up to two kilometres thick would have occupied until the end of the last ice age. We continue to climb 945 metres above sea level to the Homer Tunnel. Drawn in by the commotion at the traffic lights of this one-way tunnel is the ever-curious Kia. The other reason they may seem so curious is due to the fact New Zealand was largely predator and mammal free before the arrival of humans, which means many of our native birds lack the fear instincts their counterparts in other places around the world would have. After receiving the green light, we head down into the Homer Tunnel that descends on a ratio of 10 to 1 over 1.2 kilometres. Named after William Homer, it took almost 19 years in its construction, which didn't start until 1935 and was completed in 1953. It was considered an engineering feat for its time, and the scenery of the Cledo Valley exiting the tunnel is nothing short of breathtaking.
Once again, we are greeted by the local celebrities. Feeding kids not only puts them in dangerous situations, but creates a dependency on people for food and also leads to many issues with malnutrition, as our food is not suitable to their natural diet. For these reasons, we advise not to feed any wild animals in general. Descending down through the Kledal Valley, we stop at the Tutoko River, sporting views of Mount Tutoko in the distance. Famously named after a Maori chief, it is the highest mountain in Fiordland at 2,723 metres. Its Maori name Topuni describes the mountain as a chief's cloak, which was said to provide protection to those beneath it. From here, we reach the end of our road. Behind me here we have the world famous Pio Pio Tahi or Milford Sound. So we've had at least three major ice ages in this region, most recent being between 10 and 20,000 years ago when glacial ice sculpted these valleys after being compressed and compacted down in the high regions of the valleys. The glacial ice itself melts from the bottom and that causes it to slide down. The sheer granite we have around here was sculpted during that period of time by this moving river of ice and it created these unique landscapes and unique structures that we see around here. One of those glaciers made its way all the way down from the mountains to where we are right now, Pio Pio Tahi or Milford Sound. One of the natural wonders of the world, this glacier led to the Tasman Sea and after the sea level rise of the last ice age or at the end of the last ice age, the whole area is back flooded to form the fjords that we have here in the National Park, of which there are 14. We depart with Cruz Milford along the 32 km round journey, spending the length of the fjord out to the Tasman Sea and back. The Māori name Pio Pio Tahi refers to the mourning place of a now extinct thrush known as the Pio Pio, over the death of his good friend and famed demigod Maui. The name Milford Sound was given by sealer John Grono, named after his birthplace in Milford Haven, Wales. It was named the eighth wonder of the world by Rudyard Kipling and is acclaimed as New Zealand's most famous tourist destination.
We encounter a colony of New Zealand fur seals along the way, which includes a rookery for small seal pups and teenage males, protected within the high walls of the fjord. The benefits of going with a smaller cruise company are smaller crowds and the ability to get closer to all the waterfalls. On this cruise we encounter Stirling Falls, Milford's second highest waterfall with a staggering 155 metre drop. Here you can take part in what is often referred to as a Milford baptism. I'd like to thank both Cruise Milford and Cheeky Kiwi Travel for their amazing services to one of the natural wonders of the world. I've included links to both of their websites in the description below. The formation story behind Milford Sound or Pio Pio Tahi goes back to a demigod known as Tutaraki Fenua who found his way down here, caught up in one of those really violent storms that we tend to get in the southwestern region here of Aotearoa. Tutaraki Fenua he is making his way through the violent storms when he's being slammed up against the high cliffs around him. He pulls out a magic item in his possession known as a toki, which is a flat top adze or axe made of greenstone. And he uses that to hack into the high mountains surrounding him, trying to find a place of hiding away from these storms. He creates a crack inside of the mountains and then he chants a karakia, a prayer to open up those cracks and vibrate the mountains. As he does that, he creates a place of hiding and waits for that storm to pass. Not long after, when the storm has passed, he makes his way back out to the high seas again and continues his journey north. As he does that, another storm hits. This time, he knows exactly what to do. He pulls out that toki once more and starts to crack into those high cliffs and chants his katakia, his prayer, that enables him to vibrate the mountains open. When he hides out inside of those mountains there, inside of that crack in the mountains, he waits for that storm to pass once more, makes his way out to the high seas again. And as you can imagine, another storm hits. Now this happens in total 14 times, but what we notice from this story or learn from this story is that on his 14th attempt, he has perfected his art. He has created his Michelangelo's David, Pio Pio Tahi on Milford Sounds. Now quite pleased with him himself, he settles in to the area here and finds a place that he now calls home. After not too long, a goddess notices that all the sailors that are normally stranded upon these high cliffs are now making their treacherous journey through the high seas. Her name is Hinanua Tapo. She is the goddess of death, the goddess of the underworld. And she comes down here with a mighty vengeance to take out on Tuteraki Fenua. When she comes down here with the intention to take his life, she looks around at the creation he has sculpted and she is quite pleased with what he has created. So she decides to settle here for herself. She strikes up a deal with Tuteraki Fenua and tells him if he is to leave the area, then she will now inhabit it and he can leave with his life. And of course, you don't question death. Tuteraki Fenua leaves without a word and she now inhabits this area known as Pio Pio Tahi. Not long later, she realizes that her services are still required. She is the goddess of death after all. And if she does not make her way out to take the lives of human beings, they'll overrun this region and eventually destroy everything surrounding them. So when she leaves, she leaves behind a sacred guardian and that sacred guardian is here to ensure that if human beings ever arrive, they do not destroy the beauty of this place. Sacred guardian's name is Tanamu and Tanamu is known as the Sandfly. So the Sandfly is here to let us know that once we've enjoyed the beauty of this area, we are now to leave in peace without destroying anything. Milford Sound is a must do for anyone planning to travel to New Zealand. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel, become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family, or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks guys.